Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the world's smallest steam machine. Now recently on the channel, we took a look at this mini PC. It's known as the Menace Forum EM680. And in that video, we tested out Windows 11. This little thing is an awesome performer. It's the smallest Ryzen 6000 series powered mini PC that we've taken a look at. We've got RDNA 2 graphics and an RDNA 3 version is in the works from Menace Forum known as the EM780. As soon as I get my hands on one of those, we will be doing some more testing. But I had a lot of people asking if we could turn this into kind of a Linux console. And yeah, it's definitely possible to do. Now, I would have loved to install just basic SteamOS 3. But unfortunately, as we know, Valve hasn't released it for anything other than the Steam Deck. And there are some teams out there that have created kind of custom distros like Hollow ISO, which is based on SteamOS 3. But it hasn't been updated in a while. So recently, there's a distro out there that I've personally been using on a lot of my mini PCs, and it's known as Chimera OS. If you're not familiar with Chimera OS, basically what we have here is a Linux gaming distro. It's based on Arch, and we've got all of the features that the Steam Deck or Steam OS 3 have built in. Plus, we've got a full desktop that we can access. Super easy to install. It does support Steam, Epic, GOG, retro games. There's a lot that goes into Chimera OS. The developer has continuously updated this and it's super easy to install. This is exactly what you need to know. You can install it to an internal drive or external. And personally, I've been running this from an external drive. That way I can actually take it to different PCs and test it out there. So that's exactly what we're going to be running on the EM680 today. And by the way, I mean, right out of the box with Chimera OS, we do have access to Proton GE. So with most of the games you're going to see running here, I will try Proton GE either 7 or 8. Really depends on the game and what kind of performance we're seeing. And like I mentioned, Chimera OS will run from an external drive. So I've got this little NVMe adapter, USB Type-C to NVMe. Nice little uh, setup here. I've got a one terabyte drive installed and that's where I have the operating system ready to go. So I don't have to wipe the internal storage on this mini PC because, uh, you know, I might want to go back to Windows with it. It's really amazing how compact they were able to get this system and still perform like it does. We do not have Ethernet with this, but up front they have left us with a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and USB 4. This will support power in and video out, so you can actually use this in single cable operation mode, and I will demonstrate this in a second. But over here on the right hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot, one full size USB 3.2 port, and around back, we've got a full size HDMI port, two more 3.2 ports, and another USB 4 port. So in total, we can do three displays out of this micro PC, and they will do 4K 60. Now, when it comes to the specs of the EM680, for the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 7 6800U, and it'll run it up to 35 watts in this micro. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, with a boost up to 4.7 gigahertz. A built-in Radeon 680M iGPU, 12 CUs based on RDNA 2, and it'll clock up to 2200 MHz. The unit I have here has 16 GB of RAM, and it is soldered to the board. It's non-user upgradable. There's just not enough room in here for SODIMM slots. So they utilized LPDDR5, but this is actually awesome because we're working with 6400 mega transfers per second instead of something like 4800 that we've seen in other. It uses a 2230 M.2 PCIe 4.0 SSD. We've also got that micro SD card slot. It also has Wi-Fi 6, and we're going to be running Chimera OS, but this does come pre-installed with Windows 11. Okay, so here it is. Installation went off without a hitch, and I'm using that external drive so I can swap back and forth the different mini PCs when I'm doing my testing. I've got a lot of games installed here, and we do have access to kind of our performance overlay, so we can see exactly what's going on with this PC. And, you know, from this performance section, we can set the frame rate, we can turn on system-wide FSR. The only thing we can't do here is adjust the TDP. Remember, we're at 35 watts with this mini PC to try to get the most out of it. Heading over here to our settings, I'll show you that we're working with that 6800U, and uh, it's definitely the smallest 6800U powered mini PC that we've seen so far. 16 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz, and this thing performs really well for what we have here. Now going any higher than 35 really isn't going to work out very well because of the cooling system and how small this thing is in general. But at 35 watts, we can still get 720p gaming out of the way in Linux, and especially in Windows. If you're interested in checking out my first video, I'll leave a link in the description. Everything here is working. From our Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, I actually did test out an external Ethernet adapter over USB or USB Type-C. So if you needed Ethernet, you could do that. But remember, we've got Wi-Fi 6, so it's actually pretty quick the way it is. 
Now, uh, there was one game that I just couldn't get to work. We do have access right out of the box to Proton GE, and I've tried several different versions, but I couldn't get Spider-Man Miles Morales or even Spider-Man Remastered running. It would just kind of crash once it went into the loading screen. So hopefully uh, I can get that worked out later on, maybe on a different PC. But I've still got a lot of games that I want to test here. And we're going to start out strong with Cyberpunk 2077. 720p low, FSR set to performance, we're well over 60 FPS. We got an average of 76 FPS with this game here on this micro PC, and in my opinion, it's pretty impressive. Unfortunately, even with the settings we have here going up to 1080, it does net us mid 50s. If you don't mind playing this at around 45, you could always lock it there and have a pretty good time with it. But that jump from 720 to 1080 on these iGPUs really does take a toll on performance. Street Fighter 6, been having a great time with this game. We're at 720p low, and this is about all I can do with iGPUs. It doesn't matter if it's 5,000, 6,000, or 7,000. 720p is kind of the sweet spot there. And you know, even on the newer 7940HS or even the 7840U, we can go up to 900p with a low medium mix, but I still think it looks good like this and it's fully playable. Project Cars 2 is an older racing game, but it's still one of my favorites for the rally cross, so I love to throw it in. We're at 1080p low settings, and uh, right now we're locked at 60. So with this game on certain platforms, even if I turn V-Sync off, if I go into, let's say, the Steam settings itself and do an unlock frame rate, sometimes this game just gets stuck at 60. Tried everything to kind of unlock that, but we're right there, and it does perform well on this at 1080 low settings. These source games are going to run great. We're at high settings, 1080p with Left 4 Dead 2, and we're over 140 FPS. So if you wanted to play some of your favorites like Half-Life 2, original Left 4 Dead, Portal, Portal 2, no issue whatsoever. And we could probably go up to 1440p and lock this at 60 with kind of a medium preset, just checking out the performance here at 1080p. Horizon Zero Dawn, I've been really impressed by how well this runs on lower end systems. Uh, there's a lot of settings that we can mess around with, and low isn't the best looking, but it still offers a very playable experience. We got an average of 71 FPS out of this, 720p low, with FSR set to performance. And the final game I tested here was Doom Eternal, and I'll tell you, the performance here was very disappointing. I'm using Proton GE7. I also tried 8 and Proton Experimental, but I wasn't getting the kind of performance I usually see out of this game on iGPUs. I've always considered this one of those games that runs well on a lot of different systems, but something's going on here. Not exactly sure if it's a driver issue or maybe an update to the game itself, but we can usually net around 72 FPS, low 720p. But as you can see, I mean, we're in the mid 50s with it set up like this. So overall, the EM680 does perform really well with Linux gaming. Now, I will tell you the truth, I did get bit better performance out of most of the stuff that I tested with Windows versus Linux, but you know, having that nice streamlined interface there, and it just boots right into that Steam Big Picture or Gamepad UI, whatever you want to call it, just makes a real difference. Very small form factor, loving this thing, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the 7000 series version. Like I mentioned, Menace Forum does have the EM780 on the way, and that's going to be powered by the Ryzen 7840U. So there's a chance we could see much better performance because that utilizes RDNA 3 graphics. But uh, one thing that I've noticed here is we're basically locked at a maximum of 35 watts. I've seen it boost up to around 38 in Linux and Windows, but given how they have this set up in the BIOS and the cooling system, I think that's kind of the max, and you know, pushing it any further, it's just going to thermal throttle. If Linux gaming isn't your forte and you just want to see how this thing performs with Windows, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But uh, yeah, this is a really great little mini PC, the smallest 6000 series PC on the market right now that actually, you know, gives us some decent performance. And I'm really loving what Menace Forum is doing with these new micros. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, definitely let me know down below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the EM680 or even the new EM780 once I get my hands on it, let me know. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.